a three to four thousand dollar coolant leak. That's all that's wrong. Three to four grand. Let's get started. We're going to take a look around this really sweet 2016 Mazda CX-9 and discover why it's three to four grand and what's going on with the engine. And speaking of the engine, that's kind of one of the topics today. This is a pretty large SUV with a four cylinder in it. Maybe that's the cause of what happened. We'll find out here in a little bit. But before we jump in and show you guys where the big money is going, let's take a look around this thing. So here's the front of this CX-9. It has kind of a forward leaning edge to the top side of the grill. Kind of looks kind of cool actually. Looks like a, uh, a German Shepherd or something looking at you. But you can see on the wheels there's a little bit of flaking or discoloration going on. Those are 20 inch wheels. Which matches the big vehicle because like I mentioned it's rather large. It's, it's as big as an Acadia or something or maybe even a little larger. And this is their uh, kid hauler. They have looks like a couple of kids and they haul them around in this thing. This is the CX-9 all-wheel drive with the Sky Active 2.5 liter four-cylinder turbo. It is in fairly good condition. You can see it's a little dirty. They use this thing for a family vehicle. Let's go ahead and look under the hood. So here is our Mazda, well actually Ford, turbo 2.5 liter. It's roughly 230 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty good power for a four-cylinder, and it would be plenty for this vehicle. But we're starting to see really large vehicles powered by smaller turbo engines. For instance, a newer Lincoln Navigator with twin-turbo V6. A very large suburban sized vehicle with a V6. You can see that Magic Mike has already started diving in. There's lots of connectors disconnected. A lot of things are going to have to come apart for what's wrong with this vehicle. And we'll find out what's wrong as soon as we go to lift it up. But it does have a coolant leak. That's what's going to be causing us so much trouble and costing so much money. We can rule out the top end. There's nothing going on up top like radiator caps or hoses or anything up here. It could be a number of things that cause a coolant leak. Water pump, radiator, coolant hoses, all kinds of things. But unfortunately today, it is the worst thing it could be. So, before we dive into that, let's let Mrs. Wizard show you guys around the interior. It's actually a very nice vehicle. Okay, ladies and gents. Um, well, here's the dash. And I can't turn it on because the battery is disconnected, but they tell me it has around 90,000 miles on it. So it's pretty low miles considering the age it is so but wish we could turn it on but it's pretty basic gauge cluster as we move up you'll see that the dash is in really good shape nothing cracked there's no cracks crevices everything is looking in a great great shape the only thing i'm seeing is that there is a crack in that windshield it is very low and so it's really not an annoying spot and i could see why that may not be a priority to get fixed if we look, we can see, there you go, you can see that there is a heads-up display area there. Hard to see, obviously, and since the car can't turn on, we can't put anything up there other than the wall of the shop. As we scroll down, you'll see that we've got some basic HVAC controls. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Just have some creature comforts there with the heated seats, which makes it nice and comfy in here, especially on a nice cold day in Kansas. Simple gear selector, and again, some controls there for our radio, which goes back up here to our nice infotainment system right there. As we move down from the gear selection, you'll see that we have two cup holders and an armrest. So it's a very short space. So it's a big vehicle, but very short in this center section. And oh, look, Heidi Hole, let's open her up. And oh, look, one of the kiddos' shoes is in there. So, hmm, wonder where the other one is. Maybe we'll see it in the back seat. We have some really nice seats. They are quite comfortable, a little bolster on the side, and we do have a nice adjustable headrest as well. As we move to our door card, you'll see that we have gray, gray, and silver. So not a whole lot going on over there, but it does look rather stylish. Got some nice angles going on as well. And as the wizard said, this is the family hauler, and I feel bad because this is gonna be a pretty hefty repair for them. So they've got the toddler 
And we've got the baby snap-in base there. So two little kids, not probably wanting to have a big expense in the budget at the moment. But again, we've got a little bit of artwork going on down there. Looks like, well, looks like the head has been detached from the chicken. So sorry, buddy. One thing that is nice, if we do look at the door though, it does have integrated sunshades. And this one is down. And if we scroll that one, you'll see that that one is up with the wizard playing on his phone. Wizard, you're playing on your phone. But we can see, <laughs> and we'll see that it is integrated into the system, which makes it easier and much more sturdy. Do have the reverse mirror back there to make sure to keep an eye on that little kiddo as they're going down the road. Headliner is in really good shape because those kiddos are too small to even get up there with their little Cheeto fingers. So it's in really great shape. No sags, no marks, no tears. So unlike a Toyota with no buttons on the steering wheel, this is a Mazda and we've got buttons and buttons and a few more buttons just in case you need a button. Yes, we can control about everything right here with our thumbs, which does make it nice when you're trying to, you know, adjust things, but there are a lot of things happening on this steering wheel, but it does have the lovely Mazda logo on the inside. So enough of this talk about the interior. Let's get this up in the air and figure out where is this leak coming from? So right off the bat, we can see a lot of green staining and leaking going on over here. Our oil filter is stained with green. All these bolts are stained with green and there's green coolant everywhere, all over the place. One thing Magic Mike noticed is he could put coolant into this vehicle and within an hour, it will be all drained back out. With no pressure testing, nothing going on, just the vehicle sitting there by itself. It will leak all of the coolant out. It's a pretty bad leak. Let's go ahead and look around the front end here and then we'll take a look at the leak. So we have our radiator here. You can see Magic Mike has the hose disconnected. He's getting ready to dive in. Here's our intercooler hose. None of these are leaking. The radiator itself is dry. Nothing going on with the radiator. The engine oil pan is nice and dry. The transmission oil pan is nice and dry. Take a look at these brakes. They're good. CV boots are good. Strut is good. Sway bar link is good. Nothing loose. And the wheel is off on here, but the brake pads are good. The CV boots are good. Sway bar link is good. Strut is good and dry. Nothing loose there. So let's play the game, see if you guys can guess what the coolant leak is. You can let me know in the comments. Is it A, a cracked turbo cooler line? B, a cracked block? C, a blown head gasket? Or D, a broken plastic coolant line? I'll give you guys a few seconds and see what you think it is. So no, it's not the Buick Encore where the turbo goes out all the time. Like every six months you have to buy a new turbo on the 1.4 Chevy Ecotec piece of craps. It's nothing to do with that. The answer is C, a blown head gasket. Let's use our little borescope camera. It is the Teschlong. I don't know why they named it that, guys. I have no idea. I'm going to get this worked up in there by the head gasket and then I'll let you guys take a look. So there we can see some coolant bubbling on the exhaust heat shield. It just sits below actually the exhaust manifold. Let me see if I can get a better view for you guys. There it is. That is the gasket in between the cylinder head and the engine block. And if you pour coolant in there, which you can't now because the hoses are disconnected, you can see back where my thumb is, it's even worse. But coolant literally just pours out of the head gasket. So bad, bad news. Wow, Car Wizard, that's bad. And you know, I can smell that sickeningly sweet antifreeze smell down here. Yeah, it's dripping right on the exhaust, which evaporates the water and basically boils the coolant. And you can smell it puts off a very strong haze or an odor. You definitely want to get used to that smell or be able to identify it, that sickeningly sweet 
antifreeze smell, especially if it's on something hot. It doesn't smell like oil, like engine oil or anything else. When you smell it, you know you have a coolant leak, it's time to pull over. But yeah, it's pretty strong under here because there's so much antifreeze and it's all going on the exhaust system. So that's one thing really great to know about working on cars or diagnosing cars. You could actually take a little antifreeze and pour it on a hot exhaust and smell it. There you go. You will know that smell for the rest of your life. I guarantee it. So let's go ahead and finish up the rest of the inspection on this vehicle. We'll talk about what we found here as soon as we lower it on the ground, why it's going to cost that much, and how this is a pretty bad problem. I really hate that for this customer. So here's our exhaust again. Look at that, guys. There's green antifreeze that's been boiling all over the bottom side of this exhaust. It's literally been pouring out of this thing. And here's our drive shaft. Everything seems good there. Here's our differential. It's nice and dry. Brakes are good. Shock is good. Sway bar link is good. Nothing loose. CV boots are good. All four of them actually. Shock is good. Brakes are good. Nothing loose. And sway bar link is good. We do have a ride height sensor here. Although this does not have adjustable suspension, they use those sometimes for the headlamps. Also, they use them for traction control or stability control, things of that nature. So, it's easy to see like a little broken linkage there or something and say, oh, it doesn't have air suspension, who cares? But it is very important to have that hooked up. You can actually get warning lights on the dash if it's not working right. Let's go ahead and check our tires and we'll get this thing on the ground. So these are Toyo Open Countries. The only code I can see here, it says dot .73UV and then 7Y94921. Maybe that's a 2021 tire. You guys can let us know in the comments. What do you think it is? I really can't find any other codes on these tires, but they look decent. They look in good shape. They got good tread on them. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So that small leak you just saw, which actually is not small, it's pouring all over the place but it's just a head gasket. And I, we don't find that it's internally failed where it's getting into the cylinders. We have no reason to believe that it's been overheated. They've kept coolant in it and it just keeps pouring out and finally they had had enough and they wanted to get it fixed. We have no reason to believe any other part has failed other than the head gasket is externally leaking. They actually took this vehicle to a local shop here in town, which is actually a very respected shop, but even they said, no, we're, we don't tear down Mazdas. They really like to work on Chevys, Fords, Chryslers, things of that nature. Anything outside of that, they kick it to the curb. They don't even want it in their shop. So they brought it here. We'd definitely be happy to do it. And it, really, guys, the engine is a Ford Turbo 2.5. It's just a Ford. It's nothing special. It's, not, it's really easy for shops to say, I see a Mazda badge, that means it's a foreign car, which means get it out of my shop. I'm not working on that garbage. It's not garbage, number one, and number two, it's a Ford. There are so many parts on this car that says FOMOCO. They're everywhere. Ford this, Ford that, Ford owns Mazda. So really it's not a foreign car. This is where it gets into play, you have to have an open mind. Magic Mike's working on this. As far as he's concerned, he's working on a Ford with a 2.5 turbo. The parts are identical. You've seen this several times with some of like the Lincoln LS having Jaguar parts or vice versa, Jaguars having Ford parts. Newer Range Rovers having Ford engines and Ford parts. There's a lot of that going on. It's not just with this Mazda. Now, the price. We quoted anywhere from three grand to four grand. Hopefully it's around three, hopefully less. We just don't know what we're gonna find until we get it apart. It could be something wrong with the cylinder head. We just don't know. And just like with this Audi, the only thing wrong was one single valve. But to get to that valve, to even replace it, all of this had to come apart. Timing chains, cams, cylinder head, head gaskets, 
water pump, all this stuff had to come off. The intake, two carts full of parts for one little valve. This job on this Mazda is almost going to be an identical job. The timing chains come off, the cylinder head comes off, which means I'm not putting your engine back together with the old timing chains. You're asking for trouble. I'm also not going to reuse your head gasket. It's easy to say, car wizard, just replace the head gaskets. It's 60 bucks on Rock Auto. Shut up. No. You just saw all the parts that had to come apart. It's the same scenario here. We'll do another kind of an update while we do some other video. We'll kind of scan over here and show you guys when it's all apart. It is a massive teardown just for a little blown head gasket. We'll also have to take the cylinder head off and take it to Martin Machine and verify that the surface is flat and possibly very lightly skim it or resurface it to make sure it's flat. I don't want to put it back together and just say, I hope it works. So to give you an idea of what we're looking at, here's a picture of a Ford 2.5 torn down. It shows the timing chains there and you can see you're not taking the cylinder head off until you first take the timing chains off. So the question arises, is it worth it? on a 2016 Mazda CX-9. Let me show you a picture of one that I found for sale on Marketplace. $20,000. You might be able to find one for 18, 17, depending on the miles. This one only has 90 some thousand miles on it and it blew the head gasket. That's sad. I hate, like I said, I hate that for these guys, their family. That's really not what they want to hear right now. But it is what it is and it has to be fixed. Just like the lady that owns the car, we talked to her and she said, I really didn't want to spend that kind of money because she said, I cannot drive it like this, obviously. So it has to be fixed. There is no other option. Someone could say, put some bars leak in it and send it. That's stupid. You're going to clog up their heater core. You're going to cause all kinds of issues possibly with the radiator. This is a $20,000 car. It's not a $1,500 Altima that's on its last leg. Do you want to trust your family vehicle with your family in the car to a bottle of Bars Leak and be stranded on the highway? No, we're not going to do that. So yes, it is absolutely worth fixing. Three grand, four grand, I don't know yet what we'll find when we get it apart, but I definitely wanted to get the okay for the full four grand in case we find some other issues but we're hoping it stays near three or possibly less. So if you have a Ford vehicle or this Mazda with this engine and it's large like this, you probably don't want to be towing a heavy trailer or something with it. It's got good power. It's good enough to move this vehicle around, but I don't know why the head gasket blew if it was the engine's too small, actually blew it out. I don't think so because it's not leaking internally. It's just externally. You probably don't want to tow with one of these vehicles. We did look it up on Identifix, that's who we use for our database for pattern failures of vehicles. We did not see this to be a common problem, but it has happened a few times. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to tear this thing down, or really any of the tools we use on any of the cars in the shop, they're listed for sale on our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there are bus videos coming this summer, more Citroen updates, there's tons of cars in the shop. Thanks for watching.